So, it's the year of work as part of the year of work. I want to take more work trips, more graycations. Ah, okay. Rent a hotel room, basically a self-created prison to just do a bunch of work. Mm -hmm. That's where I'm recording the show from right now. I'm once again at an undisclosed location in England in a hotel room. Is this like you've spoken to the guard and this is your one call from the prison? <laughs> <laughs> I get my one phone call. <laughs> and this is it. You can have your one phone call, but it also has to be work. And thus, we're talking. <laughs> and that phone call will last six hours, but it is just <laughs> one phone call. So, of course, finding the right kind of place, difficult, but found a hotel, came to hotel, come into the hotel room, and, of course, the very first thing I do is I go to the air conditioning, uh. and I turn it all the way down to 16. And it let me. I thought, wow, this is great. Just what I wanted. Just what I hoped for in the world. But as I'm unpacking, as I'm setting up, I feel like, boy, it just doesn't feel like it's actually getting cold. What's, mm -hmm. what's happening here? And I look back, and the thermostat says 18. Go, That's funny. I could have sworn that the thing that I always do, I did when I entered this room, which was turn it down to 16. So I go over there, boop, 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 set it down to 16, stays at 16, I walk away, do my stuff, but later in the evening, I again notice 18, not 16. So I thought, uh-oh. I go over, I press the little thermostat down, boop, 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 16, but this time I stand there and I watch it. And I swear to God, for people just like me, this hotel put in some delay, which is let them set the temperature to whatever they want, but wait 10 seconds and then bring it back up to 18 and hope that they don't notice. <laughs> <laughs> so of course, where do I go immediately? 10 p.m. at night, I'm down at the front desk. Hey, let me put the air conditioning whichever way I want. What would you like to do in the room, sir? I would like to set the AC lower. Oh, so you want the room colder? Yes, colder. Why would you like it colder? And this is where it's like, I lose my mind, right? Like, that's I don't need to question. explain to you no, why. <laughs> they can tell you, no, sir, we can't do that, right? Like, And, and that's like, whatever. Yeah. Like, you, you, These are the rules. This is the system, whatever. There is absolutely zero point being like, why? What do you mean, yeah. why? I'm not like running a science experiment that you're going to find <laughs> out about. Like, I just want it to be colder. Like, you can do it yeah. or not, but the why is unimportant. I've got some cryogenically frozen dinosaur embryos in my suitcase. Like, what do you What do you mean, why? Like, it's. Uh, I would like it colder. I'm in a hotel room that I'm paying for. Like, Man, just can we, can we do the thing? So we had to have this like awkward conversation about why I would like it to be colder, which I'm trying to shortcut to can you make it colder? What was your answer? I'm intrigued. When they said, why do you want it to be colder? What did you say? Mike, this is not me at my best. I'll okay. I will just, I will fully admit, like, these are, these are the kind of human interactions where I just, I do not perform the best. And I just repeat, because I would like it colder. Okay. And then they ask again, and then I say, because I'm uncomfortable. There must be something about, like, this interaction. I could always feel like, oh, this doesn't go well, right? I already know I'm in trouble. No, but, like, Jen, but this is why I ask, because I actually don't think that there is a good way for this conversation to go. Yeah, there's no good way for it to go. The question is pointless. Like, yeah. the only answer is the one that it is, which is, I want it to be colder. Right. There doesn't have to be, like, a reason, you know? <laughs> Yeah, and it, it, I also, I, I, I feel like, I think the reason it trips up my brain is, I feel like questions like that, which I do get sometimes when you're you're interacting with like customer service people in some way, it's like, I would like to do a thing. And frequently, I feel like they ask me why, because I'm wanting something that's just like slightly out of the ordinary. Mm. How many guests ever come down to the front like hours after checking in to ask about the thermostat? I don't know, man. I expect every American that's ever gone to that hotel has come down to the front <laughs> desk to ask that question. Honestly, like... I, I, <laughs> I don't think that this is that rare for them. You might be right. You might be right. But yeah, I feel like a why question, it's like an implicit invitation to lie, right? Because the sort of implication is if you have a good enough answer, 
this will be granted. I feel like that's mm. that's kind of the implication behind a why question. So anyway, we stumble around with the why question. Again, in my whole life, all I wish to be is not noticed. But now we're having the manager come down to the front oh. desk because I've like thrown off the person who's actually at the front desk. And the manager's like, we went through the whole rigmarole again. She asks, what would you like to do? Why would you like to do this? I find the room physically uncomfortable at the temperature. Like I can see that the thermostat will go down to 16 but then it bumps it back up to 18. Can I get this changed? So the strategy now from the hotel's perspective was delay. So they tell me, oh, we need the maintenance department in order to do that. But we have no maintenance department on the weekends. And I'm just like narrowing my eyes, looking at the manager because I'm thinking, what do I do if something breaks on a Sunday? Exactly. I'm in a hotel. There are hundreds of rooms in this hotel. There is no universe where you don't have a maintenance department on the weekends when you have hundreds of hotel rooms. <laughs> it's just not possible. So they delay, delay, and they're like, well, sir, I checked in on a Saturday. Well, sir, we'll have to get the maintenance department in on the weekday, right, when the Monday starts. And then, of course, when I follow this up, the end result is, no, I'm afraid we just can't do anything about the air conditioning. It's centrally set. I was like, waiting for that. God centrally. damn, right? Yeah, I've exactly. So many times I've heard you hear things like that, right? Oh, it's centrally set. Oh, central's oh, doing it. Oh, okay, okay central's doing it, right? Oh, yes, yeah. exactly. So it's like this this is this is my life now, right? I'm thinking again, ideally I would like to do at least one or maybe two more little short intense working trips before the year is over to just try to like knock out a bunch of stuff that I want to do for year of work. But I'm just thinking, great. Now this is another thing that I need to add onto my checklist. It's like, does the hotel have air conditioning? Yes, which is hard enough to find in England. But then what? I need to call and ask them, tell me what your air conditioning is really set at. Like, I know you have it, but I'm also, I am also know now this is just a thing that's going to be spreading everywhere. You're all centrally setting the air conditioning at whatever you want to set it at. And I am but a humble pawn in this system and I can't do anything to try to improve my situation. So I'm going to, if you will allow me, I, I want to role play this conversation when you call. Oh, no. Oh, okay. okay, so like you've called and I'm like, hello, this is the hotel. How can I help you? Oh, oh, uh, okay. Well, I don't want to be on this call in the first place. Well, you're on it now. Oh, no. Okay. Uh, hi, I'm thinking of booking a room in your hotel. Okay. But I need to know what you actually set the minimum air conditioning to. Why? Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> you really think that this is a question that anyone's going to answer in a way that you find satisfying? They'll tell you either whatever you want to hear or they'll just say, why? I, I know. This is the thing. I know that this is one of these things where... From the hotel's perspective, they just want me to book the room, right? Yeah. And then later it'll be like, oh, well, we didn't have that policy in place when you booked, but between then and your arrival, like this new system rolled out. So here's my thought on the future, because I was like, all right, well, this is just going to be a problem in my life. Mm -hmm. But problems are meant to be solved. I went on YouTube and I tried to find like some thermostats will have a secret like bypass mode if you press the right set of buttons. This one didn't have a secret bypass mode, but in the process of doing that, it occurred to me, I was realizing, oh, HVAC systems are actually very electrically simple. Like I know behind this panel, there's really only three wires, only one of which is powered. And one of them just needs to get the correct signal to turn the AC on. So I've just been trying to think and trying to strategize about what can I do in the future. And I guess my plan is going to be if I've booked a hotel room, see if I can find the exact model of thermostat that they're using on one of the product photos of the room and just order one of those to bring with me with a small electrical kit to just replace it on the wall. I think this is going to be my plan going forward. I think this is a step too far. <laughs> Actually, I think it's more than one step too far, I think. What's too far about this? Fiddling with the electronics and like, I just think that's too far. I, I also, also, I bet it won't get you what you want anyway. What do you perceive is going to be the roadblock for this plan? I mean, I don't know enough about how HVAC systems work, right? But... I don't think that the actual thermostat on the wall is the problem. Because you're telling that thermostat what you want, right? Yeah, so I went to the company that manufactures the thermostat in my room uh -huh. and went through all of their technical details and discovered, much to my delight, Great. that... You're supposed to be working. What are you doing? <laughs> 
<laughs> well, no, I'm trying to work, right? The, ho- yeah, but the hotel is like work getting in, in my degrees. way. It's not that hot. 18 degrees is like, I will say like 16 is freezing. I don't know why you want to sit in that temperature anyway. 18 is like in a room that's cold. I'm literally sweating right now as we're having this conversation. Because well, you're getting worked I up. I can that's mop why. the sweat off of my brow in this 18 degree room. Then look, let me tell you, right? If that's the thing, your problem is not the air conditioning. You need to see a doctor. I think is what the actual situation. You shouldn't be that hot. How many clothes are you wearing? Like, what are you doing? I'm just here in a t-shirt. But okay, so listen, the important thing is HVAC systems in the hotel rooms, even according to a company that is very clearly marketing this to hotels as, hey, we will save you a bunch of money by mildly inconveniencing all of your guests. Like that is totally the pitch, right, from the HVAC company. Mm -hmm. But each of the systems is electrically isolated in the room. The thermostats are on the Wi-Fi network. That's where they're receiving instructions from. It's okay. like, ah, okay. So they're connecting to like the hotel Wi-Fi to get the instructions of like, we're not allowed to turn it down below here. And ultimately, this is just a little machine that is applying or not applying voltage to these three wires on the back. So I don't think there's any kind of direct communication between the actual AC and heating system and the rest of the hotel. Right. I think it's purely for that little panel that's sitting on front. So anyway, this is what was going through my mind. But I, I have gotten the temperature just a little below 18 to, when I'm not ranting on a podcast, acceptable temperatures. Because there's a very strange layout in this room, which is that the TV is basically right next to the thermostat. And the other thing I wanted to know is, where is the heat sensor in the thermostat? So if I turn on the TV and put a big (laughs) towel over the TV. The TV gets very warm, and it's clearly tricked the thermostat into thinking the room is like half a degree warmer than it really is for the air temperature. And when the TV eventually sets fire to the towel, the room will get even colder, so that will be good for you. See, my feeling here, like this thing that you've mentioned, this is exactly the reason they should just let me set the temperature to where I want it to be. No, you cannot draw like a line between these. (laughs) You should, because otherwise I'll have to set the room on fire. Like this is not like a logical cause and effect of why they should make the room colder, because otherwise the guests will catch fire to things. (laughs) Look, you don't want people monkeying around with your electrics, so don't Uh, uh, force them to. We cannot draw the conclusion here, like because this isn't a a natural evolution of this problem. No, but it is a very natural evolution of this problem. I I have a problem. What are my tools to solve the problem? Like that's, of course, it's going to go this way. Yeah, but most people will have stopped at bring my own thumbs. <laughs> Actually, there are many steps between like <laughs> As I said, <laughs> Yeah, there are many steps that people will naturally end before I will research the thermostat, buy a thermostat, wait for the thermostat to be delivered, bring it and a screwdriver to the hotel. Mm-hmm. Most people will have stopped before then. I mean, what most people do is is not my problem. I'm just talking about what I'm doing and why the hotel should let me do what I want to do. I don't want to bring a thermostat to the room either. Like, I don't want to be monkeying around with the electrics. I was also trying to think, like, could I rig up or maybe Cortex brand could sell some kind of product where it's like you can attach something to the thermostat and put a hot water bottle in it or something to, like, again, trick the thermostat into thinking what is the actual temperature of the room so that it will drop the temperature. Maybe there are, like, less invasive ways to do that. I don't want to be any more involved in this situation than I already (laughs) currently am. So, no. I'm going to veto the Cortex brand thermostat tricking water bottle from existing. I don't know, Mike. I think there could be a really big market. Only, only if, no, no. <laughs> this episode of Cortex is brought to you by Factor. With the busy fall season just around the corner, you might be looking for some wholesome, convenient meals for jam-packed days. Factor is America's number one ready-to-eat meal kit, and it can help you fuel up fast with chef-prepared, dietitian approved ready-to-eat meals delivered directly to your door. You'll save time, eat well, and stay on track with your healthy lifestyle. With Factor, you can skip the extra trip to the grocery store. Their fresh, never-frozen meals are ready in just two minutes. 
minutes, and you have more than 34 flavor-packed options to choose from every single week. And if you want something special, level up with Gourmet Plus options, prepared to perfection by chefs and ready to eat in record time. So you can treat yourself to upscale meals with premium ingredients like broccolini, leeks, truffle butter, and asparagus. How fancy. Plus, you can keep your energy up with Lunch to Go, factors effortless, wholesome meals like grain bowls and salad toppers, no microwave required. Then, to finish your order, choose from 45 add-ons, including breakfast items like apple cinnamon pancakes, bacon and cheddar egg bites and smoothies. I've spoken on the show in the past about, honestly, how frustrating I find lunch because I don't want to spend a bunch of time, I don't want to be eating out all the time, and Factor is awesome for this because it lets you keep these awesome meals just in the fridge and they're ready to go whenever you need them it's super super simple you can heat them up or you can have some cold options too it really takes that trip to the grocery store out that meal planning taken out really makes it super simple and they have so many awesome add-ons man those apple cinnamon pancakes yes please i really love how simple they make it i love the options and the quality of their ingredients is awesome You can rest assured you're making a sustainable choice as well because Factor offset 100% of the delivery emissions to your door along with sourcing renewable electricity and featuring sustainably sourced seafood. Head to factormeals.com slash cortex50 and use the code cortex50 to get 50% off your first box. That's the code cortex50, cortex50 at factormeals.com slash cortex50 and you will get yourself 50% of your first box. I thanks to Factor for their support of this show and all of Relay FM. So I took my assignment after our last episode, which was to install iOS 17 and try out the mood tracking. Yes, yes, I forgot about that. Right, right. And so in between us recording and, and publishing the show, I installed iOS 17 on my phone and... I would say, like, overall, the beta has been mostly okay. It's as good or bad as any other beta, but I really wanted to try out the mood tracking. Mm -hmm. And I would say that, like, overall, it's doing what I expected in the way that I expect it, but I think it has, for me, I think one key problem. So this system will allow you to, uh, multiple times a day, either whenever you decide or if you set up the system to prompt you via notifications to tell it how you are feeling. It's all contained within the health app, which if you want to go in manually and add it to yourself, suffers the exact same problem that everything else in the health app does, which is just, it's just not very well laid out. Mm. It's like just in this like list of cards. I would honestly prefer apple to have distinct apps for all of these things like the medicine tracking and you know which they do on the apple watch but not on the phone i would just prefer if they broke all these out into their own separate things so it would be easier to get to them but you will go in and you press the log button and it asks you you know how are you you can log how you're feeling right now or how you felt overall in the day and the first thing that it takes you to is like this really pretty animation and you can on a scale from very unpleasant to very pleasant you like drag this slider to say how you're feeling and my favorite thing about all of it is the colors and the animations and the shapes that the system shows you i just think this is a really nice and soft way to help somebody maybe kind of get across what they're trying to get across of how they're feeling yeah i just think that it looks really good and i think people could maybe attach to certain shapes and colors i have no doubt that there is some really good science in this you know is more than for me to understand right of like why you would do it this way also apple has finally validated my purple is clearly the worst color feeling because very unpleasant is purple (laughs) like a kind of salmony orange is like very pleasant with green and blue in the middle so everything's Mm -hmm. kind of like stars and flowers right it's like what they're going for yeah it's all really interesting design wise You go in and you state how you're feeling. The next question you're given is what best describes this feeling? And it gives you a bunch of words and you can just tap the word, which is the the most applicable. And these words differ depending on how pleasant and unpleasant you're saying you're feeling. But you can tap a button that says show more and it gives you the full list of all of them. So like, for Mm -hmm. example, if you are feeling very pleasant, but for some reason want to say annoyed, you can say that by tapping into the show more, Mm -hmm. right? Like, I don't know why you would necessarily match that up, but you can. My main issue with the app is what happens after you press this button. So it says, what best describes this thing you choose? Then you press next and it says, what's having the biggest impact on you? 
Mm -hmm. And you are given a list of things that's set up into like three groups. But in my opinion, there is just not enough descriptors here. Hmm. So like, I'll give you a good example, right? One day I, I was like, not feeling too great about something we had going on in the house with some renovations that we have going on. So I said that I was feeling very unpleasant. And, you know, it's like, what best describes this feeling? And I was like, disappointed, stressed, worried, right? I press next. And there is nothing in here for what is having the biggest impact on you hmm. that is relatable to what I'm feeling. There is nothing about home here, for example, mm. right? So, like, I could have said health, fitness, self-care, hobbies, identity, spirituality, community, family, friends, partner, dating, tasks, work, education, travel, weather, current events, money. They are the same always. Mm. Now, if you tap one of these, it gives you the ability to add additional context. And so, you could write down what you're feeling. But there were multiple times where I felt like I couldn't express what I wanted because this biggest impact field just didn't have something that was relating to what was making me feel a certain way. Mm. And what I don't understand is why they have so many options for the description words, but so few options for the impact words. Hmm. I think it will turn people off because I think people are pretty vulnerable a lot of the time when they're entering something like this. And if you're feeling a certain feeling... You're looking for validation that what you're feeling is real. And if you come to this screen and you can't find it, like it almost makes me feel like a little bit like, oh, worrying about your home is not something to worry about. <laughs> I don't mean to laugh, but I'm just realizing oh, you feel like the phone isn't validating that feeling. Is that is that the way you would want to express that? <laughs> yeah. It's like, you know, you could go to here and you go to Very Unpleasant and you're looking for air conditioning thermostat, but it's just yeah. not there. You it know? isn't there, yeah. I'm feeling very unpleasant about Yes, you're feeling very unpleasant right now because your co-host I won't agree that, that you should be able to take an electric screwdriver to a hotel room. No, he won't help me make the product with the hot water bottle. That's oh, the problem. Right. Okay, it's the same thing. <laughs> I still have agency with the screwdriver, Mike. <laughs> I find this to just be like a, a an odd omission, like or even the, the additional context or allowing you to type in whatever you want that should just be there always, mm -hmm. right? That Rather than it necessarily being the buttons. They're restricting me to choosing. And some of the time, the feelings that I was having, I couldn't express with the choice that they were making me make. Mm -hmm. And so I found that to be weird. So you, fe you felt boxed in by the end result of, of like, what is the root cause of this thing? Yeah, I had to say like, oh, money, but it wasn't a money problem. Mm -hmm. Like, that's not the problem that it was. It was just something that was frustrating to me that was going to take more time for something to be done. But there wasn't anything that I could tap inside of this screen that I felt could accurately, like, get across what I was frustrated about. So in its current state, how useful do you think this is for you i mean for me not but i i wasn't looking for this at the moment i don't really feel like i need an app like this but if i was in a time when i feel like i did or if i take myself back to the time when i was using mood path this would be very useful for me hmm. it is not perfect but i feel like it would at least give me a low friction way to be able to think a little bit more deeply about what's making me upset or how I'm feeling in any moment, whether it's good or bad or otherwise. And the simplicity and visual nature of it are fantastic. Like this is the kind of thing that Apple is good for, right? It's like boiling things down to their simplest form and giving yes, you an yes. entry path into this kind of idea. And I think that this app does that. So where like, for example, I might start using this and start logging and then be like, oh, I can't actually find all of the things I want. Is there anything else out there? that is more advanced and then I mm -hmm. could start my way into finding a different mood tracking app. But I just feel like there is, for me, just this one thing that if they change, and it, what I would like is for there to be more options, but in lieu of more options, just allowing me to, by default, type whatever I want into a text field, which is a the thing they do offer, but only when you tap a button mm. to then add more context. If there was just a, an empty text field there where I could just type whatever I wanted, this thing would be ideal, I think. In its current state, I think this is a good first attempt. 
and baking it into the system, having notifications that can grab me during the day, like by and large, a lot of the basics are there, but I think it's just missing that one little thing. <sighs> it's it's interesting to hear hear those thoughts. Um, last time we had a conversation about the this mood tracker, which I didn't like, and then you you sort of talked me around last show of like, oh, like how would you use this? And I said, oh, Mike, you know, Mike's making some interesting points. When I go to edit the show and I'm re-listening to the conversation, I got mad all over again, and I I was having that experience of past gray. Why are you letting Mike talk you into this? <laughs> like it was just. It's a very it's a very funny thing to like be in that disagreement with yourself on such a short period of time and I don't know I'm I'm tr- I'm trying to articulate like what is going on in my mind about this app because it really is sticking something with me and I think what I'm trying to like narrow down here is we also brush up against this when we talk about the theme system journal of you use it in a different way than I do I focus on the gratitude stuff and you will often mention like writing down things that aren't going well or things that are bothering you. Yeah. And it, it, it always kind of like sticks in my brain of like, I don't like that, but that totally works for you. Like that's the mm-hmm. point of the whole product is like that works for you. That's great. So what is my problem with this app is I, I feel like there's just a big difference between someone like you like a like a smart self-aware person who who thinks about this stuff a bunch who's like part of your job is to literally think about this stuff and intentionally choosing a tool and using it in a way that it works well for you and i guess on the, on the flip side of that i look like at this app and it's a bit like a an epidemiological problem like you're going to just suddenly roll out to millions of people a mood tracker and so even if there are people this could work for, I'm concerned that like on average, I think the way this thing is set up is bad for people. And trying to articulate it, it's like I've, I've always kind of had this rule for the internet, which is what you pay attention to, you grow. And so everyone knows this experience with the algorithms, right? Like. You click on a couple of news things and then guess what? You've just grown in your world. You've grown the presence of news, right? You you start watching some beekeeping videos and guess what? Suddenly like it's all beekeeping videos like this, this way of like what you pay attention to is what you grow and everyone can see that really directly with the algorithm. But I think it's also just true in your life. Like what you pay attention to is what you grow. The more you pay attention to a thing, whatever it is in your life, the more you become the kind of person who pays attention to that thing. And I just I just really worry about the negative side of this app precisely because it just says, how are you feeling right now? And I really don't like this workflow of like, I'm feeling very unpleasant. And then you say, like, I'm angry and anxious. And then you say next. What are you angry and anxious about? And then you have to pick the things. Oh, my family and my friends, right? And you select those two boxes. I mean, I don't know. Maybe people are just much more internally unaware of their own feelings than I estimate they are. But I just feel like focusing in that way, you're growing your own attention to that thing. And I just worry about like it could start like tiny reinforcement loops in people's heads, particularly around the social stuff, I just find quite concerning of like, yeah, family and friends and coworkers could just be annoying in life. And I I just, I think like rolling this out to millions of people, I think they're like lots of times people are going to do that thing where it's like, oh, they pick, I'm feeling annoyed at this person. And you've just kind of like grown that thought a little stronger in your own mind. Like you grow what you pay attention to. And it's, again, this could also just entirely be because of my experience with how frustratingly effective gratitude journaling is. That just like, just paying attention to something like this cup of coffee smells nice, like just grows appreciation very clearly and very strongly. So I think... Maybe I'm overtuned to worry about the opposite, but I still feel like I've been playing around with this app and I've been just trying to see what it is and trying to articulate my thoughts. And it's like 
every time I interact with it, I hate it more mm. and I worry more about it. Just again, not for any individual person, but Apple just works on such a scale. I think it's like a slight nudge for the whole population in an averagely bad direction. And I think the other part of that as well, which is just concerning to me, is also like with so much of the health app that I also have increasingly large number of things to complain about. Where does this translate into action is is my other concern. Like simply logging is not action. Well, they did say, I mean, and I don't know, but they did say that they would point people towards questionnaires and resources. I think probably if you're consistently saying you're feeling bad in some way or another would be my assumption. Yeah, but but I fully expect it's a... You see TV shows do this as well. It's, it's I feel like it's Please a kind of... Please contact a such and such person if you... Da, 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 da. It just, it, it feels like covering themselves. Yeah. And also, the thing with, with the mood tracking is that's too far of a step, right? If your app says you need to go to therapy... For most people, that's a, like a really far step to do, especially just on their own because their phone is telling them. And like I was looking at some of the other mood trackers. I was looking at Dalio. So I have a friend who uses Dalio and was really liking it. And I was just kind of because of this topic, I was asking, like, what do you like about this or what does it do this different? And again, maybe it's because it's not Apple. Maybe it's because it's a smaller company and they're less concerned about all of the implications of this stuff. But they do the thing that I wish Apple would do, which is like straight up give you a correlation between these two things. Your mood is heavily impacted by, did you go outside today? But I I just worry that for people, it's going to be a place to merely reinforce negative thoughts without clear but also small, tractable actions to take. Like, going outside makes a big difference. Or like, all of the things that your phone knows about you, I feel like it could just make little nudges in those directions, but it just seems like Apple is like never going to do that. They're just never showing you a graph that correlates one thing with another. So... In summary, I just really don't like this thing. Now that we're recording the show, I'm going to turn it off and try not to think about it. But it it is just silently in the back of my mind, you know, partly because we do have that theme system journal and we've talked about this kind of self-improvement stuff. Like, I just, I care a lot about people living good and happy lives. Like it's, you know, it's not a thing that we talk about a ton directly but it is something that comes up on the show it's like how do you make yourself better how do you improve how can you just be happier with your life it matters a lot to me that the audience can like move in a right direction and those are always the best messages to get from people is like Mm -hmm. impacts that you've had on people in a positive direction so i care a lot about this stuff and i just I just really worry about this one. All right. So I have two things okay. for you here. Talk me out of this, please. <laughs> I'm not going to talk you out of it because I don't think I can. But in the state of mind area of the health app, which is where you access the, the mood tracking, there is a button that says show in charts. And when you press on that, you get a couple of things. You get over the week, month, six months, or years, you can choose to look at all of the events that you've logged. And you can see... The breakdown of your daily moods and your momentary emotions. They then have a button called associations where you can then see like what you thought about each of the categories, meaning like partner, money, friends, all of those things I was talking about earlier on. There's another button called life factors where it shows you on a couple of charts your very pleasant to very unpleasant tracked entries as little dots. And then you have a chart underneath and it will let you compare your emotional state to exercise, mindful minutes, the amount of sleep that you've got, and the time you've had in right. daylight. Okay, that is good. Yeah, that so is better. So it's not doing nothing. Like, it is doing some layering of information that you've provided with other stuff that the health app can know about you. I think the reason why I was just kind of blowing past this is because as you were describing it, I'm looking at it on my phone, I'm going like, where is this? And I realized, oh, no, of course, it's directly above where I go to log the thing, it shows time and daylight, exercise minutes, and sleep. 
last last night's sleep was particularly brutal, so maybe that's why I'm feeling very grumpy right now. <laughs> I know that it layers, but I still think there's so, there's something different between like layering, like you draw the conclusion, and them drawing the conclusion and and saying like we know this. Well, this is something that we've wanted from them in a bunch of areas, right? As we said yeah. before, like this idea of like your heart rate changed. And it's like okay. Like, mm. is this good or bad? Like, can you let me know? But so that's one point. But I wanted to just state that, yeah. like, it does do, I think, more than a lot of areas of the health app of actually taking two pieces of information and putting them on a chart yes. together. So I actually think it is better than other agree. areas I will of agree. I will concede that point. The other one is I just want to state, like, what, the way you've explained about how this makes you feel, I understand it and it makes sense to me. But it mm. is not how I feel. Right. Right. And so like I, I just want to like put that out there of like just mm-hmm. you know, and I'm sure you're aware of this, but just to like state this yeah. clearly on the show of like yeah. walk me through it again, Mike. Please do this <laughs> kind of thing helps me because sometimes mm-hmm. all I know is I'm feeling something, but I don't know what it is, but I have a feeling. Like this morning I woke up and I was feeling very anxious and worried. And I had to sit, and like, because I've gotten better at this, of like taking a check for myself of like, why am I feeling this way? Like, what is the thing? And then I could end up thinking about it. I worked out what it was. Then I made a note because I needed to talk to you about it. Mm-hmm. And so I spoke to you about it. And now I feel better. But it was, it's only because I have gotten better because of the work that I've done with mood tracking and with therapy and stuff like that of like being able to label my feelings because I very frequently have feelings more than I know what they are or like where they're coming from. And so an app like this, it forces me to reflect and that is helpful. Now, I understand what you're saying about like reflecting on negative things could make you feel worse. Mm. But the negative things are still happening anyway. So Mm -hmm. there can be a value, I think, of like, say, negative about friends. And it's forcing me to say, I'm I'm feeling bad about my friends. When I do stuff like that sometimes, I'm like, yeah, but they're not so bad. Like, they're annoying me today, but tomorrow, you know, like, it it Mm -hmm. makes Mm -hmm. me like assess a little bit more deeply, like, why I'm feeling a certain way, because I get like that. This morning, I was in a group chat. And someone frustrated me in the group chat and I was annoyed about it. And then later Mm -hmm. on, it's like, no, you know what? Like, they're just living their life. They're doing their thing. It's not against me, but Mm. it affects me, sure. But it's not, they're not doing it to affect me. I'm just like collateral damage in the decision that they've made. They don't even know it's going to affect me, but it does. And so like, these are the kinds of things that like being able to reflect on my feelings more, help me label them, contextualize them and move on rather than necessarily being like about them like (laughs) weeks and weeks and weeks but i think Mm -hmm. though that that there is a spectrum of people between me and you and different people are going to feel differently about the way this is and realistically this tool is maybe for more people like me than people like you yeah, I, I think so. Trust me, I'm I'm aware that I'm a bit of an outlier in this conversation. I'm the weirder one. I think you are the much more normal person in this conversation. I do just find it just very strange to try to internalize what you mean by a sentence of like having a feeling and you don't know what know. it is. Like I, I just I cannot even conceptualize what that means like it's very strange to me but but if i if i try to internalize that as like oh that's a state of existence that could be then yes maybe getting a notification that at that moment forces me to try to clarify uh what like a like a collection of physical associations into an emotion i don't even i don't even know but like i guess if you are unaware that you're having a an unclear emotion, perhaps being forced to clarify that is helpful in and of itself. Taking that on board, I think I could understand that. And 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 again, it's like, oh, Mike's, Mike's talking me back into, like, maybe this is good. Maybe I should be less concerned if I think I'm just an outlier in this conversation. I mean, look, I don't know, but my, my gut suggests that you are. Yeah. Whoever at Apple is working on this thing the one that really says to me more than anything like this app is not made for me is when you go like how do you feel right now and it starts in the middle it says neutral 
which again for me is like 95% of the time would be my answer. <laughs> if I click next, it's the only one that has a very different set of tags. So it says, what best describes this feeling? Content, calm, peaceful. And I look at that and I think, no one who feels neutral would have those three as the only three options. Well, you see, this is where I disagree with you. If you're neutral, they are like the perfect descriptors. Like if you're feeling neutral, <laughs> what else would you be feeling? Do you know what I want to have as an option? Neutral. That's what one of those tags, it's like, why do you want the room cold? I would like the room cold. How yeah. do you feel right now? I feel neutral. I guess in that situation, I believe you can just log the feeling. You don't actually have to put anything. So like you could do that. Because I've done that, right? And like in these situations where like, I don't get to give it more. You can just click next, next, done. Like, you know, when, when I can't find the words that I want, but I would like to be able to log the words that I want, but you can just log the feeling. But yeah, to me, like if you're feeling neutral, I see content, calmed, peaceful, indifferent, and drained. Oh, you've drained? That's very drained. strange. Yeah. <laughs> Clearly, like, here's the thing. Content, calm, and peaceful to be all register as positive feelings and drained would be a negative feeling. Well, yeah, so is indifferent to me. Indifferent, it's, I see it as a negative. The indifferent is the only one that should be in the neutral category, right? <laughs> <laughs> indifferent, indifferent is clearly a neutral thing, right? But I, don't, like, I know what you're saying, but I just don't really feel like being indifferent is like a good thing. Like To me, that doesn't register as like a good emotion to be feeling. <laughs> You know, it's uh, you're you're putting emotional valence on the word indifferent that doesn't belong there. It's like, oh, I'm indifferent to two outcomes, right? Like, I I have no preference between these two. <laughs> that's what that's what indifference is. Yeah, but I think that a life led indifferent is a life not like it's not being lived. Like, you've got to have an opinion <laughs> about everything, Greg. Come on, good, bad. Otherwise, what's the point? You know? No, indifference should be your default state of <laughs> being. <laughs> No, I'm very different. <laughs> I'm team indifferent. This episode of Cortex is brought to you by Memberful. Leading a business is hard work. You're in charge of a ton of things, including looking ahead to make sure that your business remains profitable long term. One way to diversify your revenue stream is to introduce a membership program and Memberful can help you do it. Memberful has everything that you need to run a membership program of your own including a streamlined and powerful checkout, easy-to-use member portals, transactional emails, and a member management dashboard. Memberful lets you build the membership that's best suited to your audience with custom branding, newsletters, podcasts, gift subscriptions, Apple Pay, free and paid trials, automatic referral discounts, and tons more with analytics to give you an easy-to-use, in-depth view of what's working, what's not, and where to double down. You have heard us on the show in the past talk about Mortex, which is our membership program here at Cortex. We use Memberful for this. They are the option that we chose long before they were a sponsor as a way to help us diversify our revenue streams, to be able to provide additional content to our members that ranges from podcast content to newsletter content and integrations with Discord to let us set up a Discord server for people to hang out in and share what they love. Memberful is the best. I love how easy it is to use. I love how easy it is to use for us and for the people that want to sign up. They really are the no-brainer option for running a membership program. Memberful seamlessly integrates with the tools you're already using. I mentioned Discord, but also MailChimp, WordPress, Stripe, and tons more. If you need them, you can contact their world-class support team who are ready to help you simplify your membership and grow your revenue. I can attest to this. Memberful support is the best in the business. They're passionate about your success and you'll always have access to a real human. Go and check it out right now to see how it can work for you. You can get started with a no credit card required trial. Go to memberful.com slash cortex. This could be the next great move for your business. Take it from us. Go to memberful.com slash cortex to learn more. Our thanks to Memberful for their support of this show and Relay FM. In installing iOS 17, I have become a MagSafe person. I am a MagSafe believer now. Oh, is this what it finally took? It took standby. Standby is standby good. mode? Yeah, standby is super good. I really Aren't you really worried like about the it. fires though, Mike? What about what about all that heat that's being produced by the magnets and the electricity? Isn't that isn't that concerning to you? I mean, yeah, it is concerning to me. And also realistically, I'm concerned about my battery health of my phone as well, which I know has taken a dive. I don't know if it's standby related, but my battery health has gone down. I think that's the beta. That's not the that's not the charging itself. Or I'd be very surprised if it was. 
you know, wireless charging, still not a super big fan of it, but standby is worth it. I'll take the risk of the fires. Maybe it will change the heat of the thermostat and it will be good. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, that's what you should do. You should put your MagSafe charger next to the thermostat. I'm also just realizing there's a thing that I that I've I think I've told you before, but again, I'll just it probably doesn't make you feel better to know that I put money in between my case and the phone so there's like a little bit of kindling there waiting for the, for oh, the max good. Safe charger to light really good. <laughs> it hasn't caused a problem in all of these years but i just you know so you, so you can sleep a little less comfortably at night know that my phone is always charging with like a tiny bit of money that's just waiting to catch fire just a little fire stuff uh, <laughs> just a little just a little kindling yeah kindling never anybody. hurt anybody <laughs> It's really interesting to hear you say, though, that like you've been, I don't know, like a MagSafe denier for 10 years now. Yep. You, ha- you haven't wanted to do it. But standby is the thing. This got you over the hump. Yeah. Because, look, for me, I was already charging my phone fine. Like mm-hmm. I had spent a decade finding the product that I liked to charge my phone. And I found it to be very convenient. I was using a dock where I'd just pop it in and it was no problem. It wasn't like I was fumbling around for cables. I knew where the charging always was and it was just very easy. So the idea of having just a different kind of dock that was magnetic rather than placing it where it needs to be, like that was just, it was just a problem I didn't need to solve. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. But standby as a feature, so like, you know, my phone is is over there on my little Anchor 3-in-1 Cube, which is a cool product that I have. Adorable. I've got one. Yep. (laughs) I can look at it right now and I have a timer from Timery and I have my weather Mm -hmm. as little widgets and they cycle through on their own. Sometimes I get a clock. Sometimes I get some photos, you know, or I can scroll over to the next one and see some like nice images that iOS is pulling out for me. Like... It's just a very good feature to make my phone useful for the majority of my workday when it is sitting on a dock. (sighs) Maybe that's what it is. The reason I was asking you is when I watched the presentation and they showed like, oh, we have this new thing standby where you you put your phone on the dock and then it shows you this information in a beautiful Mm way. And in the presentation where it's like, oh, we also have like VR helmets, right? That was the only thing that also just stuck out into my mind after VR blew it away. It was like, oh, there's that standby thing. And when I installed the beta, I it's like I'm almost baffled by why do I love this feature so much? Like, I think it's amazingly great. But I, I, I like it so much, I'm almost confused by why do I like this so much? So like on this trip, Normally, I just bring with me a bunch of little wireless charging pads, but I specifically brought that anchor cube over there because, like, I want to see standby it's good. in my hotel room. Mm-hmm. It's like, I just love it. And, yeah, I mean, for me, most of the time, it's just showing the weather or the clock, and then I have the little battery progress meters. And it's like, man, I just love seeing this. It's great. But it's it's almost baffling because it's simultaneously a little nothing of a feature but also having shown it to some other people everyone has the same reaction of like oh i absolutely love this well i mean it's it's why we like widgets right it's just like this is just like for the whenever your phone is charging it's just just like little permanent widget machine just always showing you something right which is interesting to you or helpful to you or useful to you or pretty in some way it's like, I just think it's just very, very good. I really do think you nailed it, though. Of It makes the phone useful all the time, yeah. whereas in its default state, it's not. And like the lock screen widgets were halfway there. But I guess the difference is with the lock screen widgets, they're still only useful when you're holding the phone right before you open it to show you some information. So you were already going to do something. It's not enough information. Yeah, even if enough. like, even though like you can have them on the always on, which I did, it's just yeah. too small. Yeah. And I, yeah, I want another row. The four yeah. is infuriating, mm-hmm. but yeah, I guess maybe that's what it is of like, Oh, I can just, it's big and visible. And again, like those little, those little battery circles. Like I just love at a glance knowing Oh, I forgot to plug in my headphones like when I left the office and they're running low. Like mm-hmm. it just it's really nice to be able to see that at a glance all the time. So I'm also glad it finally got you on the on the MagSafe train and now you can now you can have fun with the whole world of MagSafe accessories of which there are a bazillion. Yeah, cuz I'm well, you know, I'm still using my pop socket, but I just take it off, put it on the charger and then just when I pick up my phone, just pop the pop socket back on the back again. And and that has actually been something which has become very natural for me. Like, I don't really think about it. 
I'm happy with how that's going. That I was worried that that was going to be frustrating, but it hasn't been at all, really. Yeah, I do wonder if that will ev- eventually go away as a habit for you, because that does seem like an annoying extra step. But, um... uh, the, but the utility I get out of the pop socket is worth it for me. Mm-hmm. Like the biggest thing that I love about pop sockets now, it's not even holding it. It's how easy it is to watch video, which I watch a lot of. Oh, to use it as a little stand? All the time. Hmm. I will just say, last thing on iOS 17, when I wrote the show notes a couple of days ago, I wrote, like, this is, the, for me, like, the top feature of iOS 17, standby. And I still think so, but I'm getting more interactive widgets, and there is some banana stuff happening. Oh, right, because you get all the cool test flight invitations. I'm on so. a few betas, and I know of there being some others that I'm not on, but I know what's going on right with some developers mm-hmm. and like people are doing things right it's Ooh, like you you've got your ear to the ground Ooh, that's very exciting yeah, yeah there's some there is some stuff happening right now and uh it's i'm excited about it because with the original widgets it was like oh this is nice and then you'd start to see a few things like oh okay there's some cool stuff going on here but i feel like I'm seeing more really interesting things this time around than I even did with the original widgets when they came to iOS 15 or whatever it was. Hmm. People are doing some really cool stuff and it seems like Apple kind of underplayed this system, like what it was capable of. Hmm. Like one of the biggest things that I have seen of just like an idea which I never even conceived of is like I've seen a bunch of widgets that allow you to scroll through pages of information effectively. Uh, what, uh, what? So it's like they're like a pseudo stack of informational pages. Is so that what I'll you're use I'll use Timery as an example because Joe has been open like online okay. about what he's building. Yeah, I, I don't want you to break anyone's yeah. secrets here. Yeah. So in Timery, you can set up saved time tracking entries, right? So you can have a bunch of things that you're saved timers that you can just fire off easily. Mm. And he has had a widget of saved timers for a while, but it can only show an amount of timers in it, right? So you could say mm-hmm. you could have five in there or whatever. Well, he has the ability now in one of these widgets where you can check a box in the configuration of that widget to show pages. So you, for example, would see four and then a little button to go to the next page oh, okay. of save mm. timers. So it's one widget, but you're able to load multiple views in that widget. Hmm. I, I think that, that, that it has been underplayed and I am very keen to see what developers have worked out what they can hmm. do. I completely forgot this even existed as a feature, the interactive widgets. Like I just I just didn't remember this at all. And I think, oh no, I have just spent a huge amount of time trying to redo the configuration for all of my widgets, for all of the home screens, for all of my focus modes, which ended up being like quite a lot of work to put them all the way that I want them to be. And it feels like, oh right, I forgot. Every single widget is going to be completely overhauled, and this is going to just throw all of my work right up into the air to be redone again. But that's very exciting. So I've been working on something for a while that I'm very excited about that is very far away from now. Mm-hmm. Relay FM just turned nine years old. It was in the 18th of August. <laughs> nine, nine years old. That's horrifying. Nine is one away from ten. Yep. To celebrate our 10th anniversary, we're going to be doing a live show similar to what we did for our 5th anniversary. We did that in San Francisco. We had a large host of Relay FM personalities come in and we played a game of Family Feud or Family Fortunes if you're in the UK. It's the same game, different name. And we had a great time. Well, we're doing it again. Similar makeup. We're, for our 10th anniversary show next year, we're going to be having a live show and we're going to be playing Family Feud. But it will especially be called Family Fortunes because it's going to be in London. Live in London. Live in <laughs> London. You can go to relay.fm slash London to go and get tickets. Tickets are available now. It's going to be on Saturday, July 27th, 2024. It's going to feature many of your favorite Real FM hosts. We have a bunch of hosts here in the UK, and there are going to be a bunch of hosts that are going to be traveling in for it, which I'm super excited about. I cannot even truly describe how much this means to me. Yeah, yeah. That we will be able to do a show in the city I grew up in, and all my family will be there to see 
what I do. Like one of the things <laughs> that I, I've, I keep I keep mentioning this to friends when I talk about it, which is like my family know what I do for a living, right? Mm-hmm. They're aware of it, but I feel like no one really understands mm-hmm. like what it is, you know. But I feel like being in a beautiful theater and coming out on stage and people applaud, then they'll understand what I do for a living, you know? Like, I feel like it might, like, get it across a little bit that, like, there are people that listen to the podcasts that I make and enjoy them, you know, Mm -hmm. rather than it just being like, Michael does that thing that he does. Do you notice I said Michael too? Because no one in my family calls me Mike. Everyone calls me Michael. So, like, (laughs) Michael's over there doing the stuff that he does. Yeah. (laughs) We're also going to be doing it in one of my favorite venues in London. It's a place called the Hackney Empire. Yeah, gorgeous theater. Absolutely gorgeous theater. So, a few months ago, I went to a show at the Hackney Empire. And we knew that we wanted to do the live show in London. We've been talking about it for a long time. And I was at the Empire and I was like, yeah, this is... I want to do it here. Like, this Mm. is where... I want to do it. Like, because the Hackney Empire looks as beautiful as any theater you could imagine in London, right? Mm-hmm. And it's in East London. It's not in the West End. So it's something we can afford to do. <laughs> but also, it means that we can get it at a good time, right? Like a Saturday evening. You, yeah. you know, not all theaters are going to be able to provide you with this. Like, we looked at some of the theaters in the West End, and it could be like, well, you could have two o'clock in the afternoon on a Wednesday. And it's like, that's no time. I don't want to do that. Mm. I am so incredibly excited about this. If you're in the United Kingdom, you should buy a ticket and come to this show. Prove that we should do more shows in the United (laughs) Kingdom. If you're in Europe, hell, if you're in America, come over and see it. This show is going to be awesome. We're taking a slight departure from other live shows and we are focusing on making it the best it can be just for the people in the room. We will be endeavoring to record this show. And if we do get a good recording of it, we're working with the the theater on this. We will be releasing it to everyone. But I really want to make this a special event for the people that can make it. So please buy a ticket and come and see us do our thing in July 2024. I think that's a good decision because when you do this kind of thing, you you always have to we have to ultimately decide like who is the audience for this thing mm-hmm. and you know when you first told me about this idea of like it is for the people in the room that really clarifies a bunch of decisions of like what are you going to do and so everything yeah. has always been more complicated because we have tried to have like audio and a live yes. stream and a, da, 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 like it's like no we're just going to do this like video can't work in the space so we'd knock that one out. We're going to use the equipment that the, the the technicians at the theater will provide for us, which will make things way easier. Mm-hmm. It means that we don't need to bring all of our own gear, which we have in the past, yes. which is going to be more complicated because Stephen has all of that and he'll be coming over from Memphis. It's just like, it's just easier to just trust the technicians. They know yeah. what they're doing. They told us they'll be able to get us an audio recording, which I'm sure that they will. But the best way to experience our 10th anniversary extravaganza is to be in one of these beautiful seats in this incredible theater in London and see it. Yeah, and prove the viability of an in-person show in London. And also, I feel like, gotta buy a ticket so that Mike's family sees a packed theater in London. Like, oh, yes. It totally is a thing of podcasting. It's a strange job because you have both of these things of like, oh, I'm talking to thousands and thousands of people, but I'm also in a room all by myself all day, right? And I feel like that's the thing that you have. And whenever you're explaining your job to people, it's like, well, oh, lots of people listen to me. Trust me. It's like, ah, but when I look at you, I see you just in a room by yourself. It doesn't seem like it. So I want you to come out on stage to like a packed theater. And I think we can do that. That's what I want. I would say like over the history of this show, the Cortexans have provided me with many of these incredible life moments. Like I remember like the podcons and stuff like that, right? Where Mm -hmm. my booth lines were way longer and they were underestimating how many people were coming and it was awesome right for like the Mm -hmm. signings i would do and stuff like that yeah and i'm asking for another one and it is i want to feel the energy of 1200 people inside of a theater like yeah what does that feel like like i live an incredible life where a bunch of wild things happen to me i don't know if i'll ever experience that thing again right (laughs) i want to feel what it's like to walk out onto a stage and have 1200 people cheering like 
that feels like something that only a small few people in the world will ever experience. And I am pleading you to give me that experience. Because <laughs> we can do it, gang. We can do it. Yeah, I'm, I'm going to say, Cortexans in Europe, buy a ticket, come see the show. Cortexans in America, make a trip out of it. Yep. London, an amazing city to visit. Easily one of the best cities on earth. Totally worth it just for a trip on its own. And when Mike comes out on that stage for his mom, I want you to go like wild, right? With like excitement and, and applause. It's also just, I cannot believe that this is finally happening. Because I, I, you know, years ago, you vaguely mentioned to me like when the date of Relay FM's 10th anniversary was, mm -hmm. you know, and it's like, oh, I put that on my calendar or whatever. And it's like, ah, but that will never come. And it's like, here we are. It's 10 years later. Like, you know, you and Steven have been running like a successful podcasting company for 10 years. It's just, it's both crazy, like how fast time has gone and also like how much you guys have done. And it's, it's great to be doing like a live show as, as part of like a real celebration yeah. and acknowledgement of that accomplishment. And that's what it's really going to be. And, and that's what I'm, and I'm, you know, we will, we were concerned when we decided to do it in London that, Maybe we'd have like a much smaller group of hosts that would be able to participate, but we've been super happy that there are a bunch of people that like want to make the trip. And mm -hmm. so like the roster to be determined, right? Like that is, that is <laughs> a to be announced situation right now, mm -hmm. but it is going to be a fantastic time full of awesome people. We're going to have a great time and we're purposefully doing the kind of show where like you could bring a friend or a partner with you. We're not going to be doing like a, let's talk about the newest thing in technology. We'll be doing like if you've seen Family Feud, you've seen Family Fortunes. We'll be putting out like a poll to people for people to answer questions like what's your favorite movie, you know, like all of that kind of stuff. And then the hosts just have to try and guess what the audience say. Like it's a very good format for fun times, and I'm really looking forward to it. And uh, I'm. Cannot wait to host in my own city. Oh, man, I'm so excited. Relay.fm slash London. It's the Relay FM 10th anniversary show live in London. Tickets on sale now. This episode of Cortex is brought to you by Fitbod. When you want to change your fitness level, it's hard to know where to start, which is why I want to tell you about Fitbod, the easy and affordable way to build a fitness plan that is made just for you. Everybody has their own fitness path, and that is why Fitbod uses tons of data to make sure that they're able to customize things exactly to suit you. They have built some powerful algorithms that will learn about you and your goals and your training ability to create a custom dynamic program based on your experience and any equipment you have access to. This is all featured in an app that makes it incredibly easy to learn how to perform every exercise. Superior results are achieved when a workout program is tailored to your unique body, experience, environment, and goals. Your muscles improve when they're working in concert with the entire musculoskeletal system. So overworking some muscles while underworking others will negatively impact results, which is why Fitbod does so much work to track muscle fatigue and recovery to design a well-balanced workout routine. By mixing up muscle groups, exercises, sets, reps, and weight over time, Fitbod serves to increase your overall strength and keep your body sharp. This also keeps your gym sessions fresh and fun by mixing up your workouts with new exercises. The Fitbod app is easy to use with over 1,400 HD video tutorials. They're shot from multiple angles to make sure that learning every exercise is a breeze. You can keep track of your achievements and your personal best to Fitbod's progress tracking charts, and it also integrates with your Apple Watch, Wear Wearer smartwatch, and apps like Strava, Fitbit, and Apple Health. I really love the Apple Watch integration, so when I'm doing my Fitbod exercises, I can see what exercise I've got coming up now, and I can change the sets and the reps if I want to. I can also advance through them, and then and if it's an exercise that I'm unfamiliar with, I can go to my phone and watch the videos. It's a great combo. Personalized training of this quality can be expensive. Fitbod is just $12.99 a month or $79.99 a year. But you can get 25% off your membership by signing up today at fitbod.me slash cortex. So go now and get your customized fitness plan at fitbod.me slash cortex. That is F-I-T-B-O-D dot me slash cortex for 25% off your membership. Our thanks to Fitbod for the support of this show and Relay FM. In this episode, I was talking about feeling a little like... You know, having feelings, big feelings. Mike's having big feelings and anxiety and stress and stuff. Past few weeks, there's a bunch of things going on, right? So 
the aforementioned live show, getting that ready. September is like around the corner. It's fundraising mm-hmm. time for St. Jude and Podcastathon. As we approach the end of the year, Cortex brand almost explodes with energy for like any other physical product <laughs> business. Like, I posted about this on threads the other day that I realized that like if you run a physical products business, your entire year is the holidays. Yes, I know. It, like, <sighs> I feel like we just recovered from the holidays and now we are preparing for the holidays again. That end of the year time for any business is like there's always a lot going on, especially if you have like a product that's focused around, you know, getting a push for mm-hmm. New Year like we have at the Theme System Journal. So like I've got a bunch of stuff going on and I have like a pretty hectic personal life right now. We have mother-in-law in town and we've got like a bunch of things going on as well. Um, just finishing off a renovation. I just feel very overwhelmed, but yeah. I think a lot of it is coming from running two businesses. Yeah. Yeah. This is a thing where this year, we sort of talked about it before, but like Cortex brand has become very really real this year mm-hmm. for us which also means like i'm sure we'll talk about like very really terrifying with some of the decisions that we have to make with regards to it and i i mean yes i have another business but like i don't run two businesses in the same way that you do relay is just a completely different beast and then to have cortex brand on top of it like the last quarter of the year is always the busiest quarter of the year. And every year it comes around, like you tell me what your schedule is like for the last three or four months. And I get anxiety by proxy just listening to you. Mm-hmm. But if if we think about your 10 years of being in the business, it's like, oh, every final quarter got like 20 to 50% busier every year. But it feels like for you this year, it is like, four times busier than it was last Mm -hmm. year or like there's four times as much stuff on the line so i honestly don't know how you're handling it at all Uh, (laughs) neither do i (laughs) Uh, just to put this into a little bit of context right so like i obviously i do time tracking i have in the first seven months of this year have tracked over twice the amount of hours for cortex brand than i did all of last year Hmm. Which is quite quite a growth. Yeah, that's a really big growth. And so like and I feel like that that is indicative of the efforts that we've been putting in this year. We've done a lot more marketing, a lot of stuff that no one's seen yet because we're just like trying to get more ducks in a row mm-hmm. and we're working on new products and we're working on bigger strategy stuff and it's just like a lot of things that we're lining up for eventually right but Mm -hmm. there is just like a lot more of it happening than we've had in the past and at the moment like you know you're saying about like i write a good thing and a bad thing in my journal every day and the last couple of weeks Mm -hmm. my bad thing has been something along the lines of i'm behind or yeah my workload is too heavy right now and because this is also i'm not sacrificing my theme this year the year of the weekend it's been awesome and i look forward to talking about it in more detail at the end of the year i'm happy to hear that because i was wondering like is this the thing that's crumbling and i was i was hoping not so obviously we again we we have this weird thing where it's like we don't talk to each other very much about our themes so it's like i don't really know but i was like boy i'm i'm i was really hoping for you that you're not caving on that so yeah, i'm, I'm, I'm happy to hear that. that but it sure doesn't make things easier no because I'm, I'm not sacrificing my personal time and i'm adding more hobbies in and i'm adding more time with people in my life that, that i care about in person like i'm still doing all of those things and i think it is what is helping to smooth out the rough edges of my workload right now and like just mm-hmm. like the, the pressure of the responsibilities that i have but also it does mean that i have less time to potentially do all the things that i want to do right like Mm -hmm. work wise and so like i'm in this like tightrope walk right now of trying to manage all this stuff but it's like the tightrope walk within a tightrope walk which is just two businesses Mm. it really feels like now more than ever there are two businesses 
Yeah. Where like I felt like I had relay, and then Cortex Brown was this thing we were working on. Yeah, it's like a side project yeah. for both of us. Yes. But yeah, it's growing to not be that very fast. Yes, in the sense of also that like I feel like we have like in this past week or so taken our first like risk. <sighs> I. I yeah, I, I'm not quite sure I agree with that. Well, what else would it have been? I, I feel like I, w- I would want to look... Well, okay. All right, so so what, what's, what's happening here is that we've just... We're taking a really big bet with Sidekick Notepad stock ordering. Mm-hmm. And it's like, here we are again, catching the eel, right? Of like inventory management and what are we going to do? And spreadsheets can try to help you make decisions in normal times but we've been talking a lot about trying to make a big bet about not having a normal time in this last quarter with sidekick sales so like it'll, it'll be no surprise to anyone that's like okay ultimately i'm going to make a video promoting sidekick notepads and we're going to hope to sell a bunch of them there's also things that we can try with advertising and it is it is just the it's just the fact like you said of a product business we should expect that most of the business happens in the last quarter of the year mm-hmm. and i don't know we've been talking for like 2 months seriously about how much of a bet do we take on this and i guess i was thinking oh we've taken bigger bets in the past on the theme system journal but i, I think I think, yeah, that's not comparable because there was just, there was like less at risk in some ways. Yes. Whereas this time it's like, boy, ordering a big amount of stock is a huge amount of money to outlay. Mm-hmm. And this this is where it's like, we just don't have any real data to make a real decision on. No. And we're just, we're just guessing. So basically, Gray has made two videos about the journal. Mm-hmm. And each time... We sold out of what we had available. And so I don't want that to happen with the Psychic Notepad. Yes. So when Gray makes a video and we publish the video and, and people see it maybe for the first time and they decide this looks cool and I want to buy one, I want them to be able to go to the website and buy one. Like Yes. And I want to do all we can to mitigate that because my feeling is it's fun and maybe cute for us with the journal when we couldn't keep it in stock and we came up with the eel metaphor, right? Of like, mm-hmm. you know, we are, oh, we just can't get our heads around this. But like, I feel like at a certain point, if we want to be taken seriously, we have to be able to control our inventory. Yeah, yeah. I, I feel like you can't just keep being in this scenario. And I know that there are businesses that run this way and it is, I and I understand the potential thinking that it's an effective marketing tactic and I think that it worked well for us with the journal. I think that because we kept selling out, we did sell maybe more faster initially because people were yeah. like, I don't know this, but I can see there is an argument, right? That like every time we put them in stock, we would sell out. And it might have been like a thing where some people were like, if I'm interested in one of these, I have to try and get one as soon as I can get one because these guys can't keep them in stock, right? And I... I understand that as like, you know, everyone of about my age remembers the Nintendo Wii and that was always a thing with the Nintendo Wii. Nintendo couldn't keep it in stock and there was always rumors around like, were they stock limiting it? So it created yeah, hype. I just, I just don't believe like, okay, I'm just, I'm sorry. I just have to interject here because I just refuse to accept this as a valid business strategy with the only asterisk of like, is your business in fashion in some way? I think that's the only world where this is really true. You're creating a supply demand issue and then that can create some element of scarcity and that scarcity can drive interest or prices, right? Like it's a thing that it, happens. Yeah. It's a, it's, it is, what I'm saying, it is a thing that either people believe is a tactic or is a tactic or is a mixture of the both or whatever. But that wasn't what we wanted to do. <laughs> yeah, it w- right? yeah, it wasn't what we wanted to do at all. I wanted to sell one to every single person that could buy one. That's how I feel with the Psychic Notepad this time. So we have placed an order which is like stupid. It makes me physically uncomfortable yes. to think about. Yeah. It really does. But it's like, I have to keep reminding myself of the thing that you're saying right now, which is we are placing this order 
to be guaranteed that we don't run out of stock. But we also don't know that as well. That's, I know, I know. So, but like, we're taking the best bet we can. <laughs> I hate it. But the thing is, if we run out of stock, <laughs> if we run out of stock, I will be content that we did all we could. If we sell out of the amount that we're buying, it will, I mean, look, it will be incredible for the business, right? If we sell out of the amount that we're buying because we are overstocking by such a large amount. If we do, I will be content that we could not realistically afford to buy more of them. Yeah, we literally couldn't have bought any there, more. There yeah. wasn't more that Cortex brand could do to prevent this. And so like, that's just going to yeah. be the way it goes. And then we've learned another lesson. Yeah. I guess that's also part of the feeling of like, I know that that's true, but it also means we've like once again done the thing of like, Oh, put it all on black, roll the wheel. And, but it's like, yes, we're doing that because like what we really don't want to do, I'm also talking to myself here in case it's not obvious, because what we don't want to do is we don't want to sell out. That's very bad. I, I just don't believe in the marketing of like, oh, you generate hype, so you sell more. No, selling more is selling more, not generating hype. Well, because also this product takes a long while to produce. Yes. From order to delivery is about 15 weeks. Yes. It's a really long time to be out of stock, right? Like it's a yeah. really, really long time. And as always, the, the huge asterisk with that is 15 weeks if everything goes right and things yeah. can always go wrong. And then it could be months. We don't know if this if the paper will even be available. And like we had that, like when mm -hmm. we made the original set, we had to wait an extra few weeks because they needed to make the paper. So we, like the, the coffee cup paper had to be mm -hmm. made because the amount that we wanted, they didn't have. Mm -hmm. But as I say, like if we sell out, then I'll know that we did all we could. Mm -hmm. And then it's just a case of like, we've learned a valuable thing because what we genuinely do not know, and I don't think anybody can tell us, is like a video that gets seen by half a million to say a million people. Yeah, let's say half a million people. Let's say half a million. <laughs> I'm just looking at the two, right? So the original journal video you did was half a million. The, yeah. the other one was 1.6 million. So I'm just saying, let's just say half a million, right? Yeah, I predict that this video will be much closer to the first journal video than I the think second you're right. journal video. I think you're right. But let's just say half, let's say half a million then, right? Mm -hmm. If 500,000 people watch a video about a product, how many buy it? I have no idea. <laughs> exactly. We don't know. <laughs> but like, yeah. we will be attempting to take another step in understanding what that number is. And, and like, look, I understand, right? Completely different product, completely different price point, completely different thing. I don't, I genuinely can't tell you which one or the other makes more sense to buy, right? Like the theme system journal was a cheaper product than, it is a cheaper product than the Psychic Notepad. And it has like a whole story around it that you can, you know, you, you build your life around this theme. But to buy the journal, you have to decide you want to set a yearly theme. Yeah, there's, there's like an onboarding process. It's there. a pro and a con for its story. Psychic Notepad is a more expensive product, but it also can be used by anyone. Mm. So like the amount of people, like the, the barrier to entry of imagining this product in your life is way lower, I think, than the theme system journals is. Yeah, it's it's interesting for me. So this is this is also like what's so nerve wracking about this from a business perspective is just the YouTube variable of like you just never know how much a thing gets seen and how much it gets resonated yep. with people. This is also why it's like placing a big bet on the stock is terrifying because you just never know what's going to happen on the other end. And I'm going to put a call out to the Cortexans because like at this point, we've sold a ton of sidekick notepads and people are using them and i would like even more feedback from people who are using it and who like it what is it that you like about it okay as you said the theme system journal you can use it in different ways but there's a very particular concept behind it we just had dinner the other evening with our friend underscore widget smith and it was interesting i was talking to him about using it and it's like oh he laid out a way that he uses the sidekick, which I would have never thought about. And I was like, oh, that's really interesting. I feel like I'm in the process of trying to like gather up. Since there's a less clear message about this, what is it that resonates with people? And like, mm. I would just love to know like the details, the specifics. If you bought it 
and you like it. What exactly? Why? I have some thoughts about that. I have a bunch of directions like where do I think I'm going to go with this? But like that conversation with Underscore was just like very unexpectedly enlightening in a interesting way for me of like, oh, I just would never have thought of that. That is literally the opposite of the way I use it. And so he kind of had a better way to use it than the way I use it. I was like, oh, that's genius. All right, I'm going to get the calls to action. So you can either go to cortexfeedback.com and you can just leave us some follow up there or some feedback there about it or on threads or Instagram. We are at Cortex Brand. You can send us a post on threads. You can send us a message on Instagram and we'll collate it together. I will say, Greg, I will share with you in our notion. I did ask for some testimonials recently because we're looking to do some stuff with marketing. We have a mm-hmm. very beautiful like template for posting testimonials, which I will share with you. There were some fascinating things in there, but we do want more of them. So mm-hmm. please send them to us at these places. And also those places, because this is another one of these things of we're trying to grow the business in a bunch of different ways. And so listen, straight up, guys, like we just want bigger numbers on Instagram and threads like that matters. That's an important thing. Give us a follow on those platforms because I think it really matters. We're very chill. Like we don't post a ton. It's fun. I'm also like I'm still living up to the original bargain of the Cortex brand Instagram account. I do post pictures of unreleased things there every now and again on our stories. Mm -hmm. I give little hints of some stuff that we're working on. So if you do care about that, it is a good place to get some of that information. And this is one of those things. So I mentioned like marketing earlier, right? So like one of the other projects that I'm managing is like trying to beef up and sort out like our Instagram page and the story and the story we tell around our business and stuff like that, which is like a whole other big thing. Mm. So Kerry, who is chief advertising officer at Relay FM, is also helping us with marketing at Cortex Brand. She's very good at all that kind of stuff too, along with all the other things she's good at. And one of the things that she told me about Instagram is she's like, your Instagram profile page is like your storefront. Mm-hmm. And I was like, oh, that's really smart. And so like, we've done a bunch of stuff of tidying that up and we're going to do some more. But for me, one of the things that I know that I do all the time is I go to an Instagram account and see how many followers there are. And it's yeah, like a, an indication of whether that business is real or not. Yep, it's like subscribers on a YouTube channel. It's just a first check number to verify, oh, do other people find this useful? So we, we want to bump that number. Please. <laughs> <laughs> Please make Mike's life slightly less stressful by having those numbers look better. <laughs> This episode is brought to you by Squarespace, the all-in-one platform for building your brand and growing your business online. With Squarespace, you can stand out from the crowd of a beautiful website, engage directly with your audience, and sell your products, services, or the content that you create. Squarespace has got everything you need all in one place. With Squarespace, you get started with a best-in-class website template. You can customize every single design detail, and they have a reimagined drag-and-drop technology for desktop or mobile. It's called Fluid Engine. This is their next-generation website design system that helps you unlock your creativity more easily than ever before. You can stretch your imagination online with Fluid Engine. It's built in and ready to go on any new Squarespace site. But that's not all that's flexible. You also get flexible payment options. So if you set up an online store where you can sell physical or digital goods, they have all the tools that you need there, including checkout, which is seamless for your customers with simple but powerful payment tools. You can accept credit cards, PayPal, and Apple Pay, as well as offering customers the option to buy now and pay later with Afterpay and Clearpay. And you'll be able to learn everything you need to grow your business with Squarespace's analytics platform. You can learn where your site visitors and sales are coming from and analyze which channels are most effective for you. You can use this to improve your website and build a marketing strategy based on your top keywords or most popular products and content. We all have that idea in us. We all have that business in us. We all have that side project all of these things need a website and squarespace is the place to go they make it so simple so easy to create a beautiful website that looks fantastic and has all the functionality that you need just as simple as going to squarespace.com cortex you can sign up for a free trial there try it out for yourself and build the website that you want when you're ready to launch go to squarespace.com cortex and use the code cortex to save 10 percent off your first purchase of a website or domain that is squarespace.com cortex and the code cortex to get 10 percent of your first purchase and show your support for the show our thanks to squarespace for the support of this show and all of relay fm i feel like in talking through that i hope is giving an idea to people of like this is just one of the things in one of my businesses that I'm dealing with right now, which is like 
they're really big things, right? Like operating yeah. a live show for 1,200 people in London <sighs> in 10 months' time. God knows if we'll sell the tickets, right? Like we think we will. It's why we took the bet. But we, we've never done a live show outside of America before. So we don't know. Just the first time you do anything, it's like the unknown unknowns are everywhere. Yeah. You just have no idea what you're going to run into as an unexpected problem. Yeah. <laughs> it's just like, yeah, you've got the live show. Again, the podcast-a-thon, yes. which like every year grows in new and interesting ways in complexity is like... Yes, and we are, as always, <sighs> growing the complexity of it once again. We'll talk about it Ugh. in the next couple of weeks because we uh, until uh, until I feel sick already about it being even more. It's like you've got so much going on, Mike. But yeah, there's the, the pressure of raising hundreds of thousands of dollars for charity, which we want to keep doing forever. But it's like it takes mm-hmm. a lot of work. Now, you know, like thankfully with the live show and the podcast-a-thon, these are actually both areas that Stephen manages, especially the podcast-a-thon. But they're still in my mind Right, and sometimes <laughs> that's the stuff. Like you know, like I don't have to put the hours in, but it's still like there in the brain. And I haven't even spoken about the fact that it's like iPhone time. Oh God, right? Yeah, of course. IPhone I was talking season. to a friend about this yesterday, and they were like, "Oh," and it's like iPhone time. It's busy for you. I was like, honestly, I don't even think about that anymore. Like I just roll <laughs> with that. Like there's that's just happening anyway. And like, I have no control over that. So I'll just deal with that as it starts to occur to me. Right. Like <sighs> that's so funny. It is so funny that like at this point, how low in my, like what I consider it to be like a, a, a like a quote unquote priority to be of like my attention mm. where I'm just like, the iPhone's coming. I know it's coming. Whenever it comes is when it comes. And like the, the the machine is oiled well enough right now that it just handles that. And like, it's so funny how the priorities have shifted. That like, yeah. I have these other things going on and it's like everything else is just hitting higher. Like, you know, September is one thing for me. Top priority without a doubt is St. Jude. I will put every hour I can into that and we'll just get it done. Mm -hmm. And it's so funny that like the iPhone comes and it's like, all right, I'll just squeeze that in. (laughs) Like when I'm not raising money, I'll just like put these (laughs) episodes in the most like important episodes of the year of upgrading (laughs) connected. They just like go in there and it's fine. Yeah. The the most, the most important event for the whole of the network is like, yeah. And also I'll do that. I guess I'd never really thought about it before, but it's a bit like this time of year is so busy because Presumably what has basically happened over time is that with the iPhone being the tentpole event, it's also the time when you knew you could be most certain that most people are paying attention and tuning in and want to hear stuff. Yeah. So you started doing these other events, but the other events have, it's it's like they've completely grown to like over consume the original event that they yes. grew out of. It's like, oh, they were just tiny branches uh, off of the trunk of the iPhone. But it's like, no, now these things are the massive tree and the original thing from which they sprouted is just like a tiny little side branch. It's like, oh, oh my. The iPhone also happens. <laughs> it's not even in the list that I wrote in the show notes. Yeah, it's, it's not even in the list. And the funny thing is, I didn't think of it either. Looking yeah. at like, oh, what is Mike so busy with? It's like, it didn't even cross my mind of iPhone season. It's like, nope, didn't even make the top five list for what is going on in Mike's life that he's he's so busy with. So like... How are you feeling, buddy? I mean, I'm stressed, right? Like, and and for me, a, a time like this, it's not necessarily just the hours of work. Mm-hmm. While they are increasing in some ways, it's not like they're unmanageable. It's just the way that it all makes me feel, which is like, right? There's just a lot of different things riding on all of these elements. What's riding on the 10th anniversary show is there being a sold out theater. Yes. I mean, yeah. and there is money on the line, of course, too, right? Of like hiring the theater. Yeah. And then the podcast a thon is there's just expectation that we set about wanting to do a good job. Like, I want to, like, mm-hmm. cannot stress enough, like, that St. Jude put no pressure on us mm-hmm. to raise any amount of money, right? Like, it just doesn't happen. They're just happy that we're involved and wanting to do anything. But me and Stephen want to do a good job 
every time. Yeah. We just want to, because it means so much. Yeah. It's the only reason to do it. Like if yes. you didn't want to do a good job, you would There's drop no this as a project. Like, yeah, there'd be no point in doing this like as a, as a half-ass project. Yeah. You're either like doing it or you're not doing it. And so like we just keep wanting to like raise loads of money and like make that a thing that continues and that we can all keep doing this thing as a community and like move this project forward. And then you've got like the potential future of our business isn't like riding on this but it would certainly be helped if we've made the right decision where like if we've made the wrong decision, it's just going to take a long time to resolve itself. Yeah. The problem, I think this is also a case where like you and I got together in person and we had to just like talk in person all freaking day yes. through just a bunch of stuff. And I think part of it, yeah, it's like, if we guessed wrong here, it's not that we'd go bankrupt or anything, but I think what I hadn't appreciated before is if this goes wrong, if we like wildly overestimate the stock purchase and then like wildly undersell, it's like, oh, we just have this business problem where your capital is tied up yep. in physical inventory. And that has knock-on effects for when can you place the next orders for the next projects. Mm -hmm. That has knock-on effects for marketing and all sorts of things. And so it's like I intellectually knew that, but it, it's very different to have it quite viscerally sink in. That the, like the bet we're making here is that if it goes wrong, it slows down Cortex brand for like a year by tying up all of this capital. Like mm -hmm. that's what's really on the line here. Yep. And that's the stressful part of it is this impacts other projects. It's not just a, oh, we'll, we'll launch something and we'll see how it does, right? Mm -hmm. Which was like, like with the Subtle Notebook, which we did, that was totally like, we'll launch it and we'll see how it does. And like, it's like, okay, great, we sell some, but it's not like, oh, if we didn't sell a bunch, it was going to impact the other products. But Sidekick is now big enough that it it really does. And that, that turns up the pressure. I will say like for us too, and it is worth remembering that like we were having conversations like this when the Sidekick Notepad launched, like, I was worried about the future of Cortex brand if this product did not take hold of people. Yeah. And and yeah. so like, you know, we, we, we have been through that specific thing with this product of like, if people don't want this or if this doesn't work or if people don't like it, it calls into question if we're ever going to be more than the company that sells the theme system journal, which is totally fine, but we have higher aspirations than just to be like a one product company. And so yeah. that the psychic notepad was, I think, the the proof of concept of like, can we do more than just the journal and it be a success? And that ended up going great. And we're very, very, very happy with the way it launched. And But now we're back here again, which is like, it's slightly different, but in just that like, we tied up our money inside, into this product again. And we need to hope that it will take hold the way the journal did when shown to the CGP Grey YouTube audience. Yeah, I guess I guess as the things feel bigger to me when you're doubling down. Yeah. So we were concerned about like if Sidekick hadn't done well, it would mean that like we were doing something wrong with modeling what does the audience potentially want? Like yes. what is the market potentially interested in? And that, that would have been bad news uh, of like, oh, we guessed wrong, which would have a bunch of other kinds of implications about what other products do we try or what other things do we do? But yeah, it's just, it's the feeling of like, okay, but now we're going to take all of the business capital and double down on one thing. That feels just like very breathtaking to me. And Again. I just want to. I just yeah. want to. I just want to correct you because, like, I don't want to have to deal with the MBAs in my email. We have not mm -hmm. taken all of our capital and put it on one product. We have just taken the majority of our available cash 
that we had set aside for any type of product when we have paused something else that we were hoping to do this year and reallocated all of our potential restock funds into this. Yeah. If this doesn't sell, Cortex brand still has some money, but like I just I, I, <laughs> I, like I know what you mean and I think there will be people that know what you mean, but like I want to state it so we don't be like uh actually you shouldn't take all of your money and put it on one product as our companies go bankrupt like no i know that is very fair to say because internet but yes it's like when i when i say that i mean all of the like unspoken for capital right yeah. that's that's basically what it means mm-hmm. like yes we, we have bills and things and it's like you're not a lunatic and say like oh we'll, th- we'll just really think about it this way it's like no, no no it's all of the available capital is is the thing that we're doing on this yeah, and we have plans right like there is an item of clothing that will return mm-hmm. imminently mm-hmm. that will help, right, with the, with this. Like, it's all part of our, like, end of year plan. But again, it's like, got to get that ready, right? That's, like, mm-hmm. a big thing coming up. And, like, a lot of expectations sitting on that because it usually does really well for us and we hope that it will again, you know? It's like all of these things are, like, building and building. Yeah. Yeah, it's just a lot right now. I felt really bad because I messaged you the other day. I can't even remember what it was, but I asked you some question about like, hey, for this thing, I thought we made a decision about this. And like, when is this going to happen? And you wrote back of like, dude, we've got two major things that need to happen before we even think about rolling that out. It's like, yep, I'm sorry. Like, let me back away from the keyboard. It's like, I I just did the terrible thing of like a thought casually popped into my head and I just messaged it to you. And I was like, oh no, Mike is Atlas over here. Don't just like be randomly throwing some ideas in his direction about stuff. It's like, there's a queue of very important things that are happening in a very particular order. I'm definitely aware of that right now. Like that, I know I'm doing that, that people that I work with are asking me about things and I'm answering them, but I am very aware of the fact that my answers may be giving away my feelings in a way that I kind of don't want, but you sometimes can't help, right? Right. It's kind of like, yeah, I know, like I know, Right, like mm-hmm. trust me, I know as well. <laughs> but like, there is there's six plates over there that have got to keep moving, and I've got to put my effort into that. But like, we'll mm-hmm. put this one on the counter, and it can go up maybe in three to four months from now. Yeah, your response was nothing out of line, but it's like I totally realized, like, uh oh, right. <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> like i know that feeling like i've done that to people but it's like i just did the thing to bike so i'm just gonna like back away real slow and <laughs> for the next few months i'm gonna try to practice thinking before i press enter when something comes into my head about the business is like does this really need to be sent as a message right now is this relevant to the top two projects that are the mm-hmm. next two projects if the answer is no like i'm just going to keep it in my own system and this will float back up in january right <laughs> yeah. when we're on the other side of all of this this is kind of a weird topic to talk about on the show because i usually feel like something that I try and do and I think we try and do is like we talk about a thing and then talk about what is the resolution to that like what is the path or or like what have we learned but like, I just don't really feel like I have an end to this it's just like hey I'm feeling like this but like there's not really and there isn't a, there's no end <laughs> it's just like this is just it right now yeah I, I, I know what you mean because I'm very aware of again I, I always want to be trying to communicate actionable yes. things in the conversations yeah which often means you talk about things in retrospect for here is a problem here's how i solved it right this this room is too warm so i made a new product which will fix this going forward into the future right like the, you know here's a thing and here's what we can do about it but i i think this is just a real insight into and like in the moment feeling of oh no, a really busy time is coming up. And what is the action about that? There really isn't any action. I mean, like, just for me, I have so much less to do than you have to do. But even for me, it's like, why am I recording this from a hotel room right now? Because I've got to shut out everything else in my life to try to finish the things that I need to finish before the end of the year. But that's about it. Like, that's what I'm doing. And the rest of it is just... We've got to get through this and 
We will know in a couple of months how these decisions have gone and how things work out. But you're hearing us talk about this before, right? Like right before everything really kicks off in September. And there isn't like a lesson. It's just, oh, when you have a lot going on, it can be really stress inducing in a non-actionable sort of way you just have a background level of like oh boy is there a lot to do and i've got to get working on this it's like i'm very aware of like this is a conversation we had before where like i need to ask of you the thing that you like less in your life and have built (laughs) for multiple years to not ever have to deal with anyone giving you a deadline Mm mm-hmm but like you've got a deadline like there is mm-hmm. a time in which this video needs to be ready so that we're able to just when the stock arrives we can put the video out and give us enough time before the next thing before the end of the year that we need to deal with mm-hmm. and so like this is months away from now because as we said before it takes like i don't know it's like about 12 weeks for them to be made and then a few weeks for them to arrive so you kind of like 14 15 weeks maybe a little bit more depending on the fact of what time of the year they'll be shipping out on but there is a time in which you need to be done and like i don't feel comfortable with the fact that i have to ask that of you because i know (laughs) but i just i know that like what i am asking you to do is something i know you don't want that is just a complicated thing in a personal relationship and in a business relationship is like not only do i have to ask you to produce a video on a timeline i also need you to do a good job right like you know what i mean of like <laughs> so it's it's a very hard thing to balance hmm. you could just do one tomorrow <laughs> it's probably not going to be any good if it, right so it's like that it's 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 complicated the other thing is From my perspective, I will do it if it's necessary, but I really strongly prefer not to have a, what I think of as like a promo video where it's like I'm promoting something just appear in the middle of nowhere, right? Where it's like, oh, there hasn't been a real video and then a product video shows up. I really want to try to avoid that. So it means that like there's a knock on effect here of I rarely do this, but I have scheduled for like, okay, the... It has this knock on implication of like, what are the next four projects and like what's happening in what order for a couple of things related to the end of the year? I'm unusually scheduled in a way that I don't normally do. But this, from my perspective, is also the thing of when we started to do Cortex brand together. I knew like I am signing up for this. This is the nature of just working with other people is sometimes you're going to have to do things that you don't necessarily want to do. And like, this is so minor about having a deadline, but still like the reason I did that is like, I think, and it's really borne out over the years, like Cortex brand is totally worth this. Like this makes sense. And there are ways in which by working with other people, you can get way more done than if you're just working on your own. But it does mean like you don't get to have absolutely everything go like just perfectly and only the way that you want it to go. Yeah, it's like these days, it's unrealistic for me to send you a message and wait for three weeks for a reply. Like mm-hmm. a lot of the time, it's just it just can't work like that. And I, I can tell that you're aware of that, right? Because the frequency in which you respond to my messages has changed a lot in the last year or so. Like, we have to have more meetings. We have to have more phone calls. Like, things that maybe neither of us would naturally want to add more of any yeah. of this stuff into our lives. But, like, there are practicalities of running a business, and you yeah. have to do them. Having in-person meetings with accountants and business mm-hmm. advisors and going over corporate structures and all of these kinds of things. It's like, yep. yep, here we are. We're doing all these things. Contracts and insurance and all kinds of fun <laughs> stuff. <laughs> yeah. yeah, but I mean, look, anytime I might be even slightly tempted to feel badly about my situation, I'll just think about your situation and then go, oh, right, once again... Mike's job (laughs) would kill me. Happy to do that for you.